excited? Who's excited that we are kicking off the new year together, right? <laughs> It's amazing. Most importantly, kicking it off in the name of Jesus. Y'all, this is beautiful. This is amazing. This is the hope we've been waiting for to just claim the name of Jesus over a crazy year. So I just want to start it off by reading Passion's verse. It's been the foundational verse for Passion since they started. It's Isaiah 26, 8, and it says this. Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your truth, we wait eagerly for you, for your name and your renown are the desire of our soul. How many of you agree with that? That the name of Jesus is the desire of our soul. Y'all can go ahead and take your seat. That is my heart's cry, that is my prayer, that the name of Jesus would be lifted up, that his renown would be the desire of this generation's soul. You know, we talk about this a lot. We're always like, guys, let's make Jesus famous. Has anybody ever said that? Like, we got to make Jesus famous. That's like such a hype thing we say at conferences. And you guys already know that this, but I just want to point out the fact that Jesus is like so famous. He already is like literally Google the most famous person who ever lived. And the first person it says is Jesus. Jesus is a very famous person. He has been drawing crowds for over 2000 years. There's like over hundreds of thousands of people literally gathered today because of the name of Jesus. And fame just simply means to be known. And so Jesus is very, 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 very famous. But I agree, we should always continue to make the name of Jesus famous. But I also wanna point out that not only is Jesus currently famous, not only is Jesus going to continue to be famous, but something cool I've been reading is that Jesus actually was famous. Like when he lived his life on earth, he was a famous person. So I want us to read Mark chapter six, because it gives a, a really good idea of this, verse 53. When they crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesar and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him. And they ran about the whole region and began to bring sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they just might even touch the fringe of his garment. Get this. And as many as that touched the fringe of that garment were made well. So we see right here, Jesus was famous. They immediately recognized him. They ran to him in cities, in villages, in countrysides. Everybody that heard the name of Jesus wanted to be where Jesus was. They wanted to touch the fringe of his garment. I remember uh, the first time I went to a Taylor Swift concert, I got word that T Swift was going to run from stage A to stage B at some point in the concert. So all of my friends, you know, were getting in the row and I'm like, hey guys, you know, I'll be the selfish one. I'll take the aisle row, you know really just perfectly positioning myself because I knew when T-Swift ran down, I was gonna like reach out and like touch the fringe of that garment. Like for some reason, when people are famous, we wanna touch them, we're gravitated to them, we're, we recognize them, we wanna draw a crowd around them. And Jesus was the same type of way. Everybody flocked to Jesus for a very good reason. I just wanna point this out in the church, that fame is not a bad thing. Fame's not a bad thing. I think sometimes fame gets a bad rap, but fame's not a bad thing. Jesus was famous and he calls us to be the light of the world. And he says, don't be the kind of light that you light a lamp and like put it under a sand. No, 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 put it on top of the sand so it can light up the whole house. So there's nothing wrong with being known, especially not for the sake of Jesus' name. Fame is not a bad thing, but I do think it gets a bad rap for a couple of reasons. One, Kristen Kane said this, the first passion I went to and it changed my life. And this is such a good point. She said that fame can be a bad thing when you let the spotlight that's shining on you shine brighter than the spotlight coming from within you. Because that spotlight will crush you. That's very true. Fame is bad for that reason. Number two, fame gets a bad rap, I think is because we're not actually meant to get the glory. Like Jesus should be famous. He deserves the glory. We're not created for glory. We're created to give glory to our creator. So that's a bad rap and that's a bad thing. But the last thing I really wanna land on is that fame and talk to you about is that fame gets a bad rap because of the motive behind fame. There's an article that the New York Times did. And this is so interesting. It's called the fame motive. And they surveyed adults in China and in Germany. And I gotta say, if they did this in America with millennials and Gen Z, I think we'd see bigger numbers, but even this is shocking. Over 40% of the people they surveyed said this, that they are just currently waiting on their 15 minutes of fame to hit because they know they will be famous one day. 40% of these adults. 
In 2006, they surveyed 18 to 25 year olds. And if they would have done this now, I think it also would have been a lot larger. But 51% of 18 to 25 year olds in 2006 said that fame is either the first or second most important life goal to their generation, fame. So they asked a girl that was in this survey, they said, what is it about fame? Why does your generation want to be famous so bad? She very honestly answered and she said this, well, because we wanna be loved. Like we wanna know we're loved. We wanna know we're wanted. We wanna know that somebody cares about us. We wanna know that somebody notices us. She even said, even if it's just like what I had for lunch, I just wish people would care. And she said, but isn't that what we all want? And you know, I agree with her. I think she's right in the fact that we all do want to be wanted and we all do want to be loved. And we all wanna know that we're cared for. And we all wanna know that we're noticed. That's not a bad thing. The bad thing and the problem is that we have a generation searching for that through fame. And I can tell you from personal experience, fame gets you that. Followers will never get you that. If you wanna feel wanted and loved and accepted and cared for and all these things, you will not find it through fame. We have a generation looking for things through followers that you can only get from the one whom we're following, Jesus Christ. We have a generation waiting to feel the sense of love, waiting to feel the sense of somebody cares about me, waiting to feel wanted by people gathering up to them instead of just gathering behind the King of Kings and knowing that you're wanted, knowing that you're loved, knowing that you're accepted because of what he's already done for you. We gotta stop obsessing over who is following us and obsessing over the one that we're following. I think the greatest revelation I've had in my life, one of is this, is that I do not need followers to know that I'm wanted. I know I am wanted because the one I am following loved me enough to come down to this earth and take my sin to the cross. I don't need followers to know that I'm liked. I know I'm loved because the one I'm following loved me enough to do that. I don't need a following to know someone cares about me. I know I'm following a God who knows the very number of hairs on my head. I don't need a following to know that somebody notices me, somebody accepts me. I know who I'm following said it is finished at the cross. Your sins are forgiven. You're accepted, you're loved, you're wanted. And I could have searched my whole life to find that in following, but I never would have. I never would have, le would have left me empty. But the one who I'm following, wow, I found it all in him. And I can tell you there's only one famous person who's ever lived that when you touch the fringe of their garment, you're healed. No other garment will heal you. No other person can truly change you from death to life, but Jesus Christ can. You know, I remember whenever I was in pre-K, and the line leader was a really big deal in pre-K. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was a major deal. And I just remember that you were only the line leader based off of your last name, but everybody got a chance to be the line leader. And it was so epic because, you know, you got to lead the class. And everybody would sing the song, we're following the leader, the leader, the leader, we're following the leader, wherever they may go. And I truly remember it being like the worst day of the year when the worst kid in the class was the line leader. Like the most annoying, the most frustrating, the guy that never listened. And I like can tell you that I actually remember that because I remember his name, I will not say it, but I remember that really frustrating me because he was the line leader and I had to stand in that line and be like, we're following the leader, leader, wherever they may go. And I'm like, I don't wanna follow you. Like what, no, I don't wanna follow you. You are not leading us in a good direction. What are you worthy of leading this class for? You have been terrible all year long, but he was the line leader. And I started to think about that and I was like, you know what? I think that we cared a lot more and we're way more concerned with who we were following when we were in pre-K than we do now. Oh, we'll follow anybody if they're the it person. We'll follow anybody if it's their 15 minutes of fame. If it's their turn to lead, oh, they're TikTok famous, we'll follow them. They're the it couple on Instagram, we'll follow them. Sure, they're leading us in no direction we wanna go. Sure, they're leading us down a very negative path. Sure, we feel more insecure than we've ever felt. Sure, we feel tempted to wear clothes that we know do not represent the body of Christ very well. Sure, it's leading us down a road of pornography, but hey, we're following the leader wherever they may go. And I just wanna tell you, 
we have to stop following the leader based on whose 15 minutes of fame is hype. Because whoever's leading is influencing your life. If you're following somebody, they are influencing you one way or another. And that's why we have a generation that looks more like the Instagram influencers than Jesus Christ. Because we're following them first instead of Jesus Christ first. I don't have interest in following anybody who's not leading me in the direction I wanna go. And we need to take that really seriously. Jesus Christ says this, he said, I am leading you to one place. I am leading you to the Father. And no one gets to the Father except through me. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And no one gets to the Father except through me. So if you're thinking more about eternity than 15 minutes, you should start thinking about truly following Jesus first because he's the only way to the Father. And it would be a shame if we spent more time spending more time thinking about our 15 minutes of fame to hit than where we will spend eternity. And we spent more time following people leading us in paths that we do not have any interest in going down than following the word of God. People ask me all the time, how do, you, how do I grow my platform? How do I grow my following? And clearly I don't have much interest in talking about that. I'd rather talk to you about how you follow Jesus. And I wanna share with you and Mark what he said to a crowd. This is what Jesus said to a crowd. He said, and calling the crowd to him, um, to him with his disciples, he said this, if anyone would come after me, if anyone would follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Jesus said to follow me, you have to deny yourself, take up your cross. That's how you follow me. It's to, notice it's totally opposite than the fame motive. It's not about yourself. I read this one time that it said, when Jesus said that that day, you have to understand that everybody there knew what that meant. When he said, take up your cross, they knew that meant crucifixion. That meant you don't know, you can't save yourself. That was not about self-promotion or any affirmation. It was you can't save yourself and you need a savior. So you should deny yourself and follow him because he can save you. And so I just wanna say to y'all as a generation, if I think if we've realized anything this year, it's crazy because I've still seen people search for this idea of fame, but I want us to stop that search and just start following God because if we need anything after this year, it's we need a savior. We can't save ourselves. We can't put our hope in ourself. We can't put our faith in ourself. You don't wanna do that because you know at the end of the day, you need something greater to put your hope in, something greater to put your faith in, something greater who can actually save you, who can actually give you hope beyond this world. And so I just hope that you take that word today and make those simple changes in your life. Deny yourself. Stop following the pattern of this world and follow Jesus Christ, the only way, the only truth, the only life to the Father. I wanna pray over us tonight because the night's just getting started and we're gonna hear so much. But right now, I just wanna declare off the bat that Jesus is famous. He was famous and he's the only one deserving of the glory that we give anyone. God, we thank you so much for what you're gonna do tonight, what you're gonna do closing this year and starting a new year, God. We just believe, God, for big things because you are a big God. God, we believe even if nothing changes or if things keep changing, it gets worse, God, that you remain the same and that you are good. You are who we put our hope in. You are who we put our faith in. God, it is for your name and your renown we do everything we do. I pray as a generation, we would stop following others and stop obsessing over our following. We would deny that, lay that down, and we would follow you, God, straight to the Father. We love you, we praise you, and we glorify your name tonight. It's in your name we pray, amen. Amen.